2. There we go. I just couldn't hear the music. Welcome to Eternal Lies. So our heroes find themselves heroes in well, Lol. Heroes. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> our heroes find ourselves in the Underdark. No, wrong game. <laughs> find ourselves, our investigators find themselves at their hotel in Los Angeles on the evening. Oh no, actually it's the morning. Come to this. Really? I'm losing all track of time. It's the morning of 10th. Choose the 10th here. September. Yeah, it's the, the morning after the meal with Laurel and Hardy and all those. Morning after the night before, exactly. Um, instead of me doing a recap, I would like for you guys to kind of just summarize what you know and what you think you have as open clues to track down. Because <clears throat> I want to just try and jog your memory about stuff because I have a feeling you've missed something and it worries me. So, as you're sat around breakfast, you're kind of deciding what to do today and in the process of doing that, you find yourselves going over everything that you've learned since that fateful meeting in New York. And I'll turn it over to you to kind of summarize what you think you know and what you may don't not know. And that's going back a few pages. It yeah, is going back I've a few pages. I've just opened up my notes as far as I can. <laughs> <laughs> <That's a problem. laughs> Um, so do we start at the beginning? All right, let me let me give you some clues. Let me, let me kind of give you some pointers. So, Janet Winston Rogers has hired you to look into what happened to her father in 1924, and that's the premise that you've been traveling. So, you first traveled to Savannah to meet with Douglas Henslow. What did you learn from Douglas during your interview and subse subsequent trip in Savannah? Well, Douglas had been with a group of, um, of their friends to Los Angeles to, um, to look at what was going on with this cult there. Mm -hmm. um, and there was uh, Francis J. Hickory, um, Grant, there was uh, John and Mary, um, is, is that Zachariah Millif Millicent? That name doesn't ring a bell. No, what, in, I... in, the, in the group? Yeah. Well, we've got Vince Stack, haven't we? He was the yeah, tough... Vincent Stack, he was... He, he was the fixer and the tough guy. We've got Catherine, who was the archivist and photographer. Uh, F.C. Coleman, who was the oh. occultist. Yeah, I was... Chair. I was at the wrong place. They just happened to be a group of names in exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've been trying to find this group of names for a while, and it's in amongst everything else with other names, and I keep looking yeah. at the wrong ones. F.C. Coleman, wasn't it? He? he was the wheelchair-bound occultist. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they were looking into this group of occultists um, who were led by uh, Echeveria. Um and yeah, that, that that all came to a head in 1924 when they they went to the farmhouse, and that's where you know Vince uh, shot Akavaria, then was stabbed to death by uh, Job. Um, mm. Catherine was dead. I think Colm Coleman died. I think they all died apart from you know the uh, the two guys. Um, so. <laughs> We were then given the name of George Ayres, uh, who was um, tied in with this. And we were given that from Job, were we? Yes. Uh, but we were also given the name, um, basically we had drug fueled parties, so we were going to look into those. But we were given the name Golgoroth, Fish from the Outside, 
long weird limbs, lots of mouths, no head, yada yada yada. Um, and then we have these these protections, which were uh, like a circle with a star and an eye. Um, and there was another one that was like a mouth, wasn't there? That's yeah. like all kind of. No, I wasn't 100 percent sure I was seeing it right. I did yeah. draw a sketch of it if I remember yeah, right. It's like the circle with eye in the middle and the little swirly things top and bottom. Mm. Yeah, that was the one that was obvious, and then I saw one in kind of the damp wallpaper or something, and then we saw it clearer somewhere else as well. Yeah. Oh one. yes, the mouth. That's that's the first time we heard the name uh, Olivia Clarendon. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, then we got brought back to uh, the house, having spoke to Douglas. Yes, he told us the location of his um, yeah. diaries and research, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, which had the um, which was on the piece of paper in um, rights of Victorian death courts, wasn't it? Yeah. And it and we had that, 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 yeah we had we had that that little puzzle. Um, as to find find out what was in find the box. Yeah, with the mm-hmm. photos and or the photo as the point of reference. Yeah. yeah, and that's why I've got the names here: Grant, John, and Mary. They were the tombstones in the graveyard. Yeah, yeah. Grant, John, and Mary, Zachariah, and Millicent. There you go. Yeah. That ties in. Okay. Um. All right. So fast forward to Los Angeles. You, what have you learned so far in Los Angeles? Um, well, we've learned that um, George Ayres hasn't been at the university. Well, he's disappeared for quite a long time and he's not been back since. Uh, but they keep his position open. Oh, to, to, to the point though, we also learn in Savannah that somebody doesn't want us, us doing this because somebody tries to run us off the road. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yes, you did. So there is there is a party out there that knows we're looking into this. And I've had the threats posted under the yes. door. Mm. Which was a Chinese guy who gave yeah. a letter to a night poor. Then we came yeah. to LA. Um, and that's about the actor that... Uh, oh, what's his name again? Uh, Richard Spend. Mm-hmm. That's right, Richard Spend, yep. So we got his name, and that he he probably died the same night as all the others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, but it was it was passed off as died in bed, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah. Correct. Um, yeah. Then we got the name of Olivia Clarendon, who was um, his yeah, bit, like bit on the side. His his, his flame. Yeah. Um, who we later later spoke to, but we we learnt. Uh, the Echavaria was black. Buckwald was town car, who was the accountant. Um, we also, from the, those journals um, and the accounts books, we we also uh, found out that it was the there was they were tra- tracking a drug. N. Mm. Well, we're um, assuming it's a drug. It's, yeah, we we assume we, we assume it was the drug at the party, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, which was had a unit price of three dollars. Yeah. Um, so we've got a potential to find out exactly what happened. We spend uh, via Yolanda Spencer. We've already spoke to uh, Livy. Um, we also tied out that the math student that was, that was in uh, attendance at those parties was Jobs. Job. Um, but we also we also have this strange couch uh, from the uh, that has a mouth and a tongue that was engaged in the sex acts that, w- that was described mm, so we wanted uh, to didn't want to find the option yeah mm. to find out what happened with that yeah um, and we, we also uh, had the fact that George told his uh, head of department what it to buy this auction set of books which we now mm-hmm. have yeah yeah you do have a list of books yes in fact, uh, you we, have, have, we have we have the books we have the books, have yeah. The books yes yeah um We've also got where Echever- Echeveria lived, um, and his two properties. We've uh, looked at the, looked where they are. There's Highland Park, and then there's there's a farm near Mount, Mount Washington. So there's a house, so a townhouse, and a farm. Farmland, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
and, and two different newspaper reports about the evening in, in, in 1924. Okay, so the the house is already the house is occupied, currently, yeah. Uh, yeah, but the family. farm the farm was bought by a construction company, uh, and may be about to be developed. It's either yeah, just been can... developed or is in the process of being developed. So we were going to look at that area um, to see what's happened with the land, see whether we could find out anything. Um, okay. All right. <clears throat> and I think we've got his. We've got Jar Jar's uh, itinerary, which leads us to uh, Ethiopia. Yeah. Um, and the archaeologist uh, yeah. that's also looking into this uh, this dig Bartolo mm. Acuna the original box that you dug up from the graveyard that had the dagger in it yep. yeah metal box where is it who's with it? us well, it's with us isn't it yeah and it's, it's all, okay. kept, all kept together didn't we we filled the box with Duff stuff, didn't we? Before we no, got that the, was that was we, the before we got uh, in the car. Which box are you talking about? Are you talking about the big box we dug up, or are we talking the correct. one from the, yeah, the, the, one, the, one, the one we dug up? We took the other one we loaded with uh, false things out. Yeah, the, the, the ones. Yeah, the Federation building warehouse, Federal warehouse. Metal box we took because it had the camera and everything in it. So yeah, we took, we, we, we took the box, but we are, before we got it in the car, before we were nearly driven off the road, we filled it with dodgy stuff from the room as well, but kept the stuff on on our person in case somebody came for the box and stole it. I don't remember doing that. I don't yeah, remember that. Yeah, I remember doing know, it with we, the federal we, we, one. I, rem I remember we specifically did. So. Yeah. That's fine. I that, yeah, I knew we'd put dodgy stuff in the government's one, but I didn't remember that. Okay. I did All remember right. that we took the box, though. So from your perspective, then, what clues do you think you need to chase down still to kind of get a feel and an understanding of what happened? Uh, uh, ideally, take a look at the, the site farm? where this potentially mm -hmm. could have happened. Farm. Okay. Wow. All right. I wouldn't mind trying to do a bit of legwork in the auction and, and try to find out who bought that chair. Or yeah. furniture, it'd be listed under, wouldn't it? Might be, yeah, it might be a false lead, but you know, know it might be some, one of the cultists or. Or some poor unfortunate person. May not have, yeah, Echavaria may not have actually been killed and he's still about. In which case, he will try and get those type of things back. We're just going off word of mouth. We've got no evidence to say that he was dead, just that. He was injured. He was killed. And the person that killed him was killed as well, so we've got no way to check that up. Okay. Um, Any other clues that you think you need to follow up? We would, well, I, I've got a lot of reading to do. You do? Because um, I was looking at the books, wasn't I? And I was also looking at... Um, there's two sets of books I was looking at. There was the uh, the account the accountants, and there was also um, the occultist books as well. Yeah, the accountants ones we've more or less looked at. You yeah. did the code breaking, and then I looked at the actual mm -hmm. figures and things, and I was going to try and help you with the other books. Um, I think potentially we could tie off. Exactly how spend died by Thorkity Yolanda Spenzel, but uh, whether we'd actually get anything out of her, I don't know. Mm. Yeah, um, I don't think we're going to get anything out of that apart from them trying to protect okay. the name of yeah, the family the <clears throat> So there is still one thing that you need to chase up that's absolutely critical for you to be able to understand more information, um, and that is Buckwald. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, yes. so he's on, he's on my list yeah. here because we, 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 we did. Down. We found out where his uh, offices Correct. were. You have his offices. Yeah. I've got one more question for you. When you interviewed Olivia, she talked about Ayres being part of the inner circle. But can you remember who she said she thought the inner circle comprised of? 
Give me a second. Uh, well, all I've got here is... Is it Larry Magwood or is he our driver? He was your driver. That's fine then. Um, in which case, I've got Edgar Jobs, Raymond, Etavarchia. Yeah. Um, and that that's it. Uh, yeah, I've got Air, Airs, Airs Jobs. Yeah, not sure yeah Georgia. We, not, not sure whether she put spend in there. Um, um, yeah, I've just got my student in these here, LA. A professor yeah. has introduced. So I don't know whether the math student was as well. Yeah, that was Jobs we, we worked out, didn't we? Well, we're assuming it's Jobs. Yeah, true. I don't know. But didn't we show her a picture? picture? I showed I showed her the picture I'd done. You said, yeah. yeah, it looked like an old uh, version of him. Yeah, that's right. Um... Okay. <laughs> What McDum wasn't in it, was he? No. No. Wasn't the, I'm remembering something about uh, a math uh, lecturer type thing, professor. But I can't remember who he was. So you haven't you haven't really explored the math professor angle. No. Yeah, because we 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 uh, I think it was it was put forward that that could have been the book vault as an accountant, but I I don't think it was. Mm. Um. So yeah, that was that was Jobs. We're assuming that was Jobs. Um, professor. Yep. All right. So there's still a name then that you haven't. Can either I haven't told you which is it's not a Doctor McDonough, is it? No, that's the guy we spoke to. No, sorry, no, McDonough is McDonough is the guy that you spoke. He's the head of, he's yeah. head of history. He's the head of history, correct? So there's still a person of interest that you haven't uncovered yet. Yeah, which either no. you haven't uncovered it. You must have done that. See, I've got Beverly Woods here, but... But it's got died next to her. No, she, she was an up-and-coming actress, Beverly Woods. Beverly Woods was an up-and-coming Also died with Echavaria. That died, yeah. Oh, at the, the, final, the final party, yes. Um... Okay, so... I will remind you because you will have got this clue. She will have told you because it's a core clue when you interview Olivia. She'll have told you that as far as she can remember, the inner circle of the cult consisted of Echavaria, Ayres, and a guy called Samson Trammell. Not Job. Not Spend. I don't recognise the name. No, I've not got no. that name anywhere. Okay. Then perhaps I, I either said it very quickly or somehow I skipped over it and didn't didn't give you that information. Yes, yeah, so I've got somebody else to look into that. Okay. Uh, actually, it could be at UCLA as well. Oh, Go on, sorry. No, I was going to say the, th the thing we haven't done is put names to faces on all these pictures. Mm. Yeah, you haven't done that. In in the university, there would be a um, a wall with all the pictures of all the tutors on there, wouldn't there? The lecturers. Mm, maybe not in the 1930s. Oh yeah, true. That's a very modern thing, isn't it? We 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 have spoke to. Can we just speak to um, a journalist? We yeah, spoke, he was we the just, guy that we just, we yeah. just spoke to a journalist Obviously. that did the piece, didn't we? Yeah, yes. he's now the like, he's now the, boss. the editor. The editor, isn't That's he? Not, yeah, editor in of the uh, tick piece. If we call him back up, we could ask whether he's ever heard of Samson Trammell when he was doing his uh, 
when he was looking into it. He may he may have come across the name. Other than that, it's down to registry and look for uh, births and deaths. Okay, so with the time that you have on the 10th, what do you wish to do? Farm? Well, for, if we get up early, assuming mm. we make a farm, we get up early, mm. we can go first thing to births and uh, reg you know, re registry uh, and look for births and deaths. Whilst I'm looking at somebody can make a call to the um, the, jour the journal, the editor, see whether he's ever heard of him. Um, and then somebody else can make a call to the university uh, and just say we're looking for, um, you know, a lecturer mm -hmm. or a professor uh, Trammell. And they can either say yay or nay. Also, is... And then we can uh, go to the farm. Oh. I was going to say, it's Buckfold's office in between any of these things. Uh, he was south. I have to have been down here somewhere before I've got to use. I found his office. I didn't make a note of where it was. Yeah, it was in downtown LA. Downtown LA. Is that you have, you, you did get his address. So, yeah. um, the births and deaths, the main records for birth and death would be in central LA, downtown LA. So, you would be close to Bookworld um, doing that. Obviously, the farm is to the north. Yeah, so. Well, we're, we're in the north anyway, so I suppose we could do we could put those off till t t tomorrow. We could make the two phone calls first thing then uh, to the editor and the university to see whether any, any, that any of those two of areas have heard of Samson Trammell. If they, if they haven't, then so be it. Um, and we can do the birth and death when we go to the um when to book when we go to book calls. But first we we could just head north from where we are once we've made those phone calls to the farm. So we get yeah. there in daylight. Yeah. Um, which of you have evidence collection? I have it, but I have no points left. Don't need to spend a point, you just have evidence collection, right? Yes. Um, as you're kind of talking through this at breakfast, it's played on your mind. You've seen the name Trammell written down somewhere in something that you got yesterday. So that was the books and receipts and things. So the box of airs things. It's in the same place that you got the name Bartolo Acuna. That was uh, oh the address book, correct. Okay, is is it local? <clears throat> uh, it appears to be in Pasadena. Never remember where that is. Yeah, my geography uh, is it's terrible. Just, it's east of east of where we were. Okay. Okay, so we've got though. Uh, this is how old is this address book now? Then uh, it appears to date back to well, as far as you can tell, at least nineteen twenty-four. Yeah, so it could be out of date, but... Okay, so phone calls. You call the editor, and he unfortunately has not heard the name Trammell before. Indeed... It didn't come up on any of the um, things that he got sight of, the, the documentation he got sight of from the original police report. Um, and neither did um, any of the um, coroner documentation identify a trammel. Though he does apologise and tell you that 
there were a lot of bodies burnt beyond recognition. And I don't think in 1930s DNA was a thing that they could oh, use no. very successfully. So it's possible he's alive, but no guarantees. We can search his name is Bertha and manage to see if there's a, in a a more recent address, or whether it matches with the one that we've got in the address book. Since we're there anyway. Yeah, just for reference, uh, Pasadena is just off the east of the map. Okay. Uh, so it's you where you've got Huntington Library on the yeah right side. It's east east that way. You got south and and whatnot. Okay. So it's a bit of a hike out of... Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a fair old trip, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A couple of hours by car, probably, or an hour at least by car. Okay. Maybe it might be worth doing a, um, a scout across there after we've been to the farmhouse. Because that's up just to the middle of the map, isn't it? At the top. Yeah. Um, how about ringing the university, giving them a call to see if they're, if he's still... Working there. Yeah. Rather than driving hands. there. And check whether the address we've got for him matches what they're still holding. Yeah. I don't... Provide the address we've got, they might be able to confirm it at least. Yeah, yeah. Even if they don't give us a new one, we'll know whether it's a wasted trip or... Then he's, or even find if out he's on campus. It... Yeah, when he was last in, if not. Don't... Who was that and what, what about? Uh, phoning the um, like university about Samson. Is okay. he still on staff? Um, and if not, the address we've got for him is it still current, or do they know whether he's moved since then? Um, the lady you speak to is very apologetic, but she has no record of a trammel on staff now. Or certainly not for the last couple of years. Okay. Is there any way to check further back? This would have been around 1924. Um, is there a number I can call you on, sir? And I will call you before the end of the day. Give her the hotel number. Yeah, so yeah. You leave a message at the front desk. Yeah. Okay. Very well. She will do that. Thank you. And it's not that there'd be no point speaking to the history professor with them, you know, Dr. McDunn, because um, him and George were quite pally, weren't they? So well, it just makes you wonder if, if, if um, no. they were in the same departments, weren't they? Yeah, but I think he stuck his neck out for him, hasn't he, by keeping his job on offer? Or, or did... No, no. Oh, no, right. no, no. Just he did case. that. He, no, he did that because he gets the grants. Ah. And his undergraduates are able to run as his classes for him. Fantastic, yeah. I just wonder if he knew if, if Samson Trammell had been going there. Yeah, they were both the inner circle. It's possible that he frequented the place. Because if you remember, um, Mac McDunn gave you Ayers things because mm. you realised what Ayers, what McDunn was up to, and it was kind of a, a you point, don't yeah. you don't tell anybody, and I'll arrange for you to have possession of these things in these books. That's right. Yep. Yep. Okay, so you're going to go to the farm first or downtown? Um, farm. I don't know. I'd say go downtown first. Do we not want to find out what how, if there's anything at the at the farm that will give us? Yeah. 
So something to turn the, turn the thumbs on, book fault or whatever. I'm, I'm hoping the books that we've got might do, but but I was thinking if we do the farm, then we could drive across to uh, check out the address we've got in the, in, in the book for, well, for Samson. That's, Pasadena's, yeah, that's a long Pas- way. Pasadena's about 40 kilometres away from where we are. You're looking at a couple of hours' drive. Yeah. Right. I mean, so, you have your driver, so it's not a problem. So, yeah, we're, oh, we, yeah we, we, we could get we, we, halfway across the map. This is beyond the map, so... Probably easiest to do... It's kind of on the way. The, the farm's are kind map. of on the way, isn't it? Where was the farm again? Near Highland Park, wasn't it? Yeah, it's up, up here, wasn't it? Up, up in that yeah, area, yeah. Yeah, kind of on the way. So you have to go east, then south to town, and then sort of northeast from downtown to Pasadena. Yeah, because our hotel is pretty much in the middle, isn't it? Not our hotel's far left, isn't it? It's up left and gone. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah sorry. Over yeah, the hills, isn't it? Yeah. yeah oh, in which, sorry, in which case, yeah, definitely the farm first. Yes, yeah, so we, that... we could go. We could go farm, and then we'll probably have enough time to get to uh, um, Trammels and back, and that'd probably be it. Be it for the day, and then we can do everything downtown tomorrow. Mm. If we take both cameras, take photos around the farm, just in case one of us ends up snapping dead? something. Yeah, yeah, dead. Or, yeah, dead or insane. <laughs> yeah, can do. I hadn't actually thought that, but yeah, also a valid reason. Okay, the journey um, down to where the farm is is uneventful. Um, You arrive at the area that you believe the event of 1924 took place. It appears to be a fairly substantial, well, yeah, a fairly substantial piece of land that to both the south, the north, and the east, you can see a number of um, housing estates in various states of build. And sort of smack bang in the middle is this parcel of land that, from a distance, (coughs) appears to be untouched. (coughs) It's Tuesday, isn't it? Are are the people building? There are people building. Only everything is around. Specifically on the east and the north sections there are definitely workmen um underway uh basically building yeah working okay is it worth asking the before we go into this area asking the builders um whether they know whether this land is due to be developed (coughs) yeah could be it seems a bit strange that they're working around it almost like it's haunted they're afraid to go into it, so there could be some story to it. There could, there could be a mine or something that they've only just discovered, so I don't, I don't know we're walking and falling down a 300-foot shaft. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we'll go, go and have a, a quick discussion with some, some uh, labourers and stuff. Maybe a foreman. Okay. So you pull up um, to the eastern sort of um, build site where this parcel of land is. And well, several people kind of stop doing their jobs and they kind of stare a little bit at the rather splendid um, sedan that you've driven up in. You kind of get yourselves out, you come out and you kind of look around and um, a sort of a middle aged, slightly a portly gentleman kind of heads over to you. Can I help you? 
we'll have a quick look at what kind of buildings they're uh, put, putting up. Do you have uh, architecture? I've got architecture, yeah. Um, I could assist you with that if you wanted. You don't need to spend anything. Uh, those of you with architecture will recognise them as single occupancy sort of family homes. So yeah. designed for small family, you know, small family units. You, you start your standard uh, white picket fence estate thing. Yeah. The right. ones further away from the parcel of land are in closer to or have been completed. The ones closer to the parcel of land are less finished. Yeah, so it could be that they're just working this way and it's just a... Um, um, yes, um, we were looking at um, these developments and um, for looking for this, this parcel of land that's over there. Uh, it was an old, old farmhouse, I believe. Um, we were looking whether that was earmarked for development and whether that could be possibly be purchased if it wasn't. Bear with me a second. You do technically have oral history, don't you? Oh, by, the way, by the way, everybody can have a 24-hour refresh if you wish. Not that much will refresh, because I don't really think you've used any skills that refresh overnight. I do have oral history, yeah. All right, well... It was due to be started about two months ago, but we've had to down tools on that bit of land. I'm finding it difficult to convince the workers to work over there. Well, why? Is it is it dangerous? Animal attacks, believe it or not. I've had a couple, couple down with snake, bite, bite, uh, snake bites and uh, a, a, ra um, a rabid dog attack. Since then, uh, the crew have decided to uh, start on the northern piece of land oh um strange um and they don't affect anywhere else doesn't appear to be anywhere but around there did your did the uh, company call in exterminators we've had a look they're in the process but um yeah at the moment, it's uh, getting people to work over there a bit too hard. Well, do you mind? Do you mind if we? Because you know, as long, as long as it's not structural or you know that you found, you know, a minus below it or something like that. Do you mind if we have a look at the piece of land? Because, like, I say, you know, if if you're not keen on developing it and it's safe, then um, there could be a possibility that it'd be bought. He pulls off his flat cap and kind of stretches his slightly balding head and. No, I don't see any harm in it. There's not a lot. Of, they're just a couple of ruined buildings. Ah, oh, well, uh, thanks for your time. You're welcome. Wait, raise an eyebrow. Yeah. Seems strange. Check my guns loaded. <laughs> I, I, I really need to get me one of them and learn how, <laughs> and learn how to use them. <laughs> yeah, rabbit dogs. Yeah, choosing a snake might be a bit tricky, but I like it. Okay, um, no. drive up back over to the farm, I suppose. Uh, you drive back to the farm. Um, you can drive up. What may have once been some kind of trackway, it's now a little bit rutted and lots of long grass kind of hiding a lot of it. So you're kind of bumping around as you drive up there. And it is clear as you drive that they have definitely started work quite away from where the farm buildings, the remains of the farm buildings are, but they, they definitely started work. You can see the foundations of two or three um, houses. Uh, marked out but there has been no sign and and looking at it as you pass probably months two months at least since they were last worked on okay um 
the I'm car gets that close to the to the ru- ruined buildings and it kind of stops and you all kind of pile out the vehicle take a look around look around see if i can see any movement of wildlife it's hard to tell um the grass is long and wild this place hasn't been tended to for quite some time nothing seems to be moving sort of out of the ordinary but any birds or anything they're roosting as normal they don't there are startled or anything no there are birds that you can hear and occasionally you'll see some birds fly over any roosting on the buildings doesn't appear to be okay i'll just uh open the boot of the car mm-hmm. uh, so it's tire in yes i will take the tire, tire <laughs> in out okay no problem it's really the tire, tire iron. iron. <laughs> the tire iron in your hand. Okay, let's um, let's just go you straight are. for the, the farm building. Are you on, Joseph? Um, I've got a knife in my boot. Okay. Just just in case. We... I, I left everything else back at the hotel because I thought, you know. Yeah. Oh. Checking this out, I didn't think it would be potentially safe. So many weird things going on that I thought there might still be cultists about. Or hmm. no, I always have my, my knife in my boot, no matter where I go. It's part of the um, uh, of the design. The the farm buildings are atop a hill with quite a good. I mean, it's not a steep hill by any any stretch of the imagination, but you can imagine that any house built on here would have quite a good view above the roof line of the houses built around it and sort of southwards, you know, in the very distant, you can see um, the, the smog of Los Angeles. <coughs> the buildings themselves appear to be, um, well, not appear, they have suffered serious fire damage. Uh, those of you with architecture, you can very much make out you know, the farmhouse and the barn set slightly away from it. The barn itself has suffered a lot of fire damage. Okay, as we're approaching, I'll, I'll watch the grass to see if see movement going through it, like it's been pushed aside. In case there's a dog coming towards us or something. Okay. Doesn't appear to be. Nothing regular, at least. No kind of regular animal paths through the grass. Yeah. It's got rabies. It, I wouldn't expect it to stalk or anything like that. I'd just expect it to charge at us. Um, okay, it's that heading towards the building. Okay. I'm going to fall behind you. Okay, you get up to the you get up to the, which building in particular, the farmhouse or the barn? Uh, the farmhouse, I think, because that might have more information. If the barn's been on fire, odds are things will be destroyed there. Okay, the farm has suffered some serious fire damage and has collapsed in inwards in part, uh, in parts of it. There are bits of the farm house still intact. Going and kind of peering through broken windows and half shuttered windows, there doesn't appear to be any furniture left in here, as far as you can see. Was it two story or it's a single, single story farmhouse? Yeah. Go around the building, see if there's any root cellar type thing with potential doors to go down into it. Okay. There oh, would like storm shelter. Yeah, there would be at the back. Yes. Okay. Head around, see if I can find that because that's likely to be oh, the least damaged. I would have thought. Yeah. So there is. It's like you see in the classic American movies. So two pieces at two doors with handles. Yeah. A very rusty chain with padlock has been attached to the handles. Okay. That's quite handy that we have a, a tie around. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah, throw the tire iron first. Okay. It's rusted. It, hopefully it'll snap, otherwise I can try and pick the lock. The lock does not look to be in a good state for picking. That's why I was taking the tire iron first. A couple of strikes, or two or three strikes, and a bit of leverage, lever force against the lock, and you feel it snap where the metal has rusted and become weak. Take this chain off. Uh, how big is the chain? Oh, you know, about that kind of size. Kind of wrapped around about three times and then padlocked. Okay, take the chain as well. It's no problem to weapon if we need it. It is rusted, it's in bad condition, but it, it'll still hurt somebody when you hit them with it. Yeah, that's what I'm taking. Okay. Probably that's something it might. Uh, and open the doors. Okay, as you open the doors, uh, can I get stability checks from everybody? It's a stability one, so you would potentially lose one point of stability. It's up to you if you wish to spend a point or more to try and make it, but the difficulty is, as always, four. Alfred. Oh, Ralph. I don't think I've made one of those, but that's the first time I've not spent any points. So, <laughs> uh, Joseph, oh dear, Joseph and Ralph, you both lose one point of stability, please, as you are startled by hundreds of bats that come swooping out into the sunlight. It wasn't something you were expecting, and all you can see, certainly Ralph and um, Joseph, all you can see are hundreds of tiny, sharp mouths mm. <laughs> around you, and they kind of come around you a couple of times before disappearing over the hill down as a black swarm looking for somebody, somewhere else to, to, to bed down. I have lots of money, so from this day forward, I'll be known as the bed man. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you move in downstairs. That's right. <laughs> Alfred, you were almost expecting something. So as you pulled it, you kind of pulled it to one side and the bats came straight out over Ralph and Joseph and away from you. So you weren't startled as such. It looks dark down there, of course. There is a light filtering down some stairs. They look a little bit unstable. And down towards the bottom, obviously, there's lots of bat dropping, and there's that horrible, strong smell coming up from from the cellar. Um, I'm, I'm just going to take a breath and, and put my hands on my knees and breathe heavily, and then reach down, pull my knife out of my boot. Okay. Take a take a handkerchief out and put it across my mouth. That's fine. Probably a good idea. Um. Just checking if I had anything like. Is there a, a lantern or anything nearby? I haven't made. Do you have of... preparedness? Yes. Spend me a point of preparedness. I've got a torch. You have a torch, right. You can spend a point of preparedness and there'll be a lantern hung up about halfway down the stairs, or you can just rely on the torch that um, Ralph has on his person. Might as well have both. Okay. All right. The surprisingly, there is a small amount of oil left in the lantern. The wick looks to be in decent condition, and of course, if you smoke, as you know, some of you do, you will have matches with you. Yes, indeed. Like the lantern. Okay. The Probably lantern. Um, it, the, the cellar probably goes down about 10 feet into the under the hill and under the the, um, the farmhouse above. It's probably maybe five or six feet wider than the actual floor plan of the of the house, using a lot more space underneath than the house itself sits on. There is a strange, distant kind of musk smell in the air. Small bodies they didn't find. No, you, you would have thought they would have checked out this place before. Mind you, you the lock's you still attacked. So. Well, they may have put the lock in on after clearing the bodies. 
It was chain and padlock, wasn't it? So anyone mm. could have put that on. The... Yeah, so it's kind of a strong sort of plant-like musky smell. This be the source of some of the drugs. Are there any sort of boxes laid around? Yeah. Go yeah. down and Sorry. with the lantern and take a look around. Well, do you want to jump into? Well, make sure you hold on to something, and, and if you give me the lantern, I'll I'll pass it down to you when you when you're down the bottom. Thank you. Okay. Getting down at the bottom, um, the stairs creak quite menacingly, but they hold your weight. Um, I'll follow down with them and pass them the lantern when I first step down onto the next step. So it's kind of... Oh, sorry. It's a musk smell, but as you go down further, it seems to take on this kind of rather pungent moss-like smell about it. Okay. Uh, yeah, still holding the handkerchief over my nose, just in case it's a mould of some sort. That spore. Spores. Yeah. yeah. Um, and shine the lantern around see if I can see what what's giving off the smell there are proper there are in this almost not quite the center but just offset from them the, the, what you imagine is the center of the cellar there are four brick pillars kind of going from the floor to the ceiling obviously the walls um, at the northern end so if you've come in sort of from the east let's say um, the northern end appear to be rough. Uh, in fact, most of the walls are not. In fact, yeah, they're not. They're not. They're not worked stone. They are. Um, they're natural cave stone. But looking at it, there are the faint marks of chisels and other tools to suggest that they've been, at some point or other, they were carved out by hand. Um. As you kind of walk around, you get that that smell begins to get stronger. Um, I'll pull my hanky out of my uh, top pocket and, and press it over my mouth. the The cellar itself is is bare. You know, there, there doesn't appear to be anything in here. No, no remnants of anything at all. Is it is it dry? It is. Yeah, it is. Apart, yeah, it, it's dry. Not to be stupid about animals here, but if this was locked from the outside and there's no other entrance in, where did the bats come from and how did they get? In? Well, if there's a a passage off the cave-like walls. Could be anywhere down there. There could be another way out. We haven't looked at all the walls yet. Mm. So yeah, I was thinking dry for um, fungus as much as anything else, but the back of the northeast pillar, there seems to be a stain on the floor. Maybe a of feet it's a dark color than the rest of the floor other than where the back droppings are lay okay do you want to take uh, a photo maybe of it is, is, yeah, is, is your flash a white light rather than the lantern's yellow 
Usually, yeah. Yeah. Um, I need an extra set of arms to hold a lantern, a handkerchief, and dig for two. And I'll I'll tie the handkerchief around the back of your head so it's over your mouth and nose. You look like a bandit. Yay! Yeah. Oh, I'll use my tie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and I'll hold the lantern for you. Right. Right. Uh, yeah, I'll take a photo of the stain. There is a is flare it... of light inside this um, um, cellar. And for a moment, as the light kind of fades from your eyes, um, Joseph, the stain seems to take on a menacing mouth-like appearance. Mm. Um, I'll take a step backwards um, with a slight intake of breath and then shake, shake my head and try to get the, that white, bright white dot out of my eyes. Yeah. As that kind of fades and you're left with just your lantern light, it doesn't appear, it just looks like a stain on the floor. Glancing around, you can see there are some stains running down that side of the pillar and when you look upwards, there is a fist size, like a, a hand-sized hole that you can just about see light. Not enough light to kind of have any effect down here, but as you look up, you can see um, there must be, you know, it's about that kind of wide. And, and But you think you can maybe see daylight above? Hmm. Um, I'll take out my knife and the stain on the floor. Just chip at it, see if it comes away. To um, it's dark. It's dirt that's darker than the compact cellar floor, almost like it's got wet or damp and has made it kind of crack up and and colour. Whereas the rest of the floor is just hard, compacted dirt. Could it be blood? Old blood? Take a sample if you wish. Do you have anything to put it in? No, I just I wanted to see whether it flaked up more than anything else. Yeah, it flakes up. It it, it could just be wet soil. It's hard to yeah. tell. Right, okay. Um, Ralph, what are you doing? Um... Just looking, just looking around, um, keeping keeping an eye out and, and taking note, um, and just basically being be being a light source with the torch. Okay, as you get to the northwest corner of the K of the cellar, your foot crunches something. Please, um, don't, please don't please don't be a skull please don't be a skull please don't be a skull <laughs> <laughs> down the torch down. it looks like tiny shards of glass Bad for that um looking closer is are they shards from a large piece or do they look like they were formed from a small vial they look like they were formed from a small vial so something N may have been in. Yeah. Okay. And there is a again, this this is where that pungent mossy smell seems to be concentrated. That's what could have wet the floor. Oh please tell me N isn't blood. I could tell you N isn't blood. I'm not telling <laughs> you if that's right or wrong. But you know, yes, you know, I can definitely yeah. say Amy's not blood. Yeah. Liquid the the selling. Um I'll just point, no, I'll, I'll just no point out point, smell. Point, Yeah, I'll just point out right, okay. there's a for ten years I wouldn't have thought there'd be a an iron smell from blood anyway. Um I'll point out there's some vial there's vi looks like there's a uh, broken vials on the floor. Uh, see if there's any that's, you know, look around and see if there's any that aren't broken or boxes with them in or anything like that. Just one. 
kind of in the corner. Um, it looks like there is a strange whitey powder about chest height in the very corner where the two walls of this cave meet. Cave slash cellar. Okay, make way over carefully. Make sure I watch my footing and. Right, it's literally. Take right, a look. It's kind of, you're you're pretty much stood there, right? All so right, the okay, is on the you. floor where this cave corner is, and you've kind of looked up and you can see this white stuff, but not anywhere else. Nowhere else, just there. Okay, you said there was a box there as well. No, there isn't a box. No. Well, it's just the white stuff. Just the white stuff. And what appears to be the glass of a broken vial under your foot, where you crunched it. And is, now is it your foot. Like it's been thrown? Yes. Or, not, or knocked off? Oh. Thrown or not, but yes. What be what they've put in the vial? Yeah. You said there was white powder. Yeah, this looks like white powder, yeah. Okay. Um, I will take a piece of, out of my note, notebook mm -hmm. uh, and do a bit of origami and make a, an envelope out of it, fold the corners over. Okay. Make an envelope and scoop some into it. Scooping in with... I'll, I'll, I'll pass you my knife. As you disturb it, that musky, mossy smell gets stronger. Interesting. If we could take this, take this somewhere. We could get it analysed, I suppose. Yeah. Maybe they'd have something at the university to be able to do it, so we don't have to. Um... Oh, saying that, maybe I can call. Let's see if I know anybody. Okay. You can get some of the, the substance and. Carefully put it into a folded piece of paper, which you can secure about your person without any problem. This hole in the brickwork. I'm going to reach into it to see if there's anything in there. See if it's a way to post something down from the top into the, the bottom in case something got stuck. Okay. Just have a, a gentle feel around to see if there's. Or whether anything was hidden or anything. Okay. Nothing. Is there any other way out of here into the building above? Like Doesn't where stairs would have been? To be. No. Seems like a self contained cellar, not attached, although under the farmhouse, no access into it from the farmhouse seems to be present. Maybe that's small yeah. holes how the bats get running out then. Yeah, I'm going to take a look along the cave type wall, see if there's any entrances that the bats could have used to get in. No, the only other hole is, I mean, the only hole in here is that one you've just found, right. um, which, you know, would be big enough for a bat to come down. Um, or perhaps you didn't quite see it, but maybe there was a, a gap between the two doors, bar in the cellar somehow, that they could have got in, you know, a small piece of wood missing or something, uh, from a corner, hard to say. Um, I'm, I'm going to head back to the stairs, but as I do, I'd like to have a look under the stairs. 
you know, because okay. it'll be those wooden slots, so I'm assuming it's going to be a void behind the stairs. There is a void behind the stairs, yes. Um, is there anything on the floor where I can see, or just in case somebody's dropped something while going in and out? There are two more partly broken vials. Hmm. One where the top is intact, broken about a third down, and the, the last two thirds shattered. And the other one, the reverse, where it looks like the top is shattered, because you can see a small stopper. And the back end, about half of it, is still intact. Is there any powder in that? That, that no, they're empty. They're they're, empty they, as well. they just seem to be clean vials. They're only about that kind of size. Mm. Uh, I'll, I'll mention it. There's two more vials under, under the stairs, and um, I'm, I need to. I'm going to go up to the top. Okay. As you come up out, set to one side, um, hutch down on all fours. <coughs> Big, fluffy tail, slightly fluffed out there appears to be a scraggy looking black and white cat it eyes you just sits there looking at you um i'll come up and um push myself down a little bit and say hello there as you do that it lunges and snaps at you catching you on your arm with its <gasps> teeth it was Simply. a cat, goddammit. It was bound to do that. Even that will <laughs> knock you off the bloody table. As it does, uh, it then lets go, shrieks, and runs off into the grass. Your arm begins to throb and itch. You little bastard. Uh, I've just been a, had a cat jump on me. And you look where the skin has been punctured, and the teeth marks are strange. Crooked. They almost resemble the mouth that you've seen. Um, I'm going to pull out my, uh, my, my, my little flask I have in my pocket, pour some yep. of the alcohol over it, and then try to wrap the... Um, handkerchief I've got over my mouth around it. Okay. And I'm going to pretend I didn't see that strange looking scar. <laughs> okay. No problem. But as you as you kind of do so, something else catches your eye. So sort of just down the hill on the next sort of ridge where the next sort of hill flattens out to the uh, west of the farm, you can see obviously the, rem the burnt remains of the barn. Here and there, there are pieces of wood with blackened timber ends sort of still protruding from the ground. There's lots of black in the middle. But there appears to be a fairly intact beam that's kind of fallen somehow off the barn to back towards the farm. Step. You can see it kind of sitting proud amongst some grass. Just you're kind of looking down a bit on it. Mm. Bit like um, a mast on a, on a ship, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I'll wait for the other two to come up while um, cursing my luck. Yeah, there was two yeah. two of these vials to pick up, didn't you? Well, yeah, there was, they were broken. There was nothing in them. Okay, right. Um, yeah, there's nothing else down here. I'll head out. Okay, you head out. Um. Joseph seems to have something wrapped around his forearm. Right. That, was a, that was a little black and white cat, and I was being my usual self, and I went, hello there, and it jumped and took a bite out of my arm. Feral after, bloody thing. After we were told that those dogs were rabies and... It was a snakes. cat. Cats are evil. Of course. They don't need to be in one of these. A cat would do that normally. 
How bad yeah. is it? It's, it's, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I've, I've washed it with alcohol, and, and I'll, I'll take it off and, and show him. It looks like a malformed, maybe malformed mouth, cat's mouth. You know, teeth a bit crooked. It's not it bleeding. Looks, it's, right, it's not bleeding. It's red. The skin has been broken, and it's a little bit sort of swollen, more from a reaction. Like a, I mean, if you, when my cat bites me, I usually swell up where he's bitten me, mm. and I end up with like a white blotch, and you can see his teeth marks, and he gets told off, and he goes and sulks on his blanket for ten <laughs> minutes, and comes and sits on my knee and purrs. That's usually what happens. Um, but yeah, you've got that kind of angry redness where you're obviously having a localized reaction to the bite so it doesn't need dressing or anything like that it's not that type of wound it doesn't seem to be at the moment no, no. Keep, 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 a, keep, a, keep an eye on it because uh, it's a it's wild cat obviously yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm put my handkerchief so um you could lose the arm um yeah and they <laughs> mentioned rabies as well so uh yeah and that's a horrible shot through your stomach so <laughs> no don't want, to, don't, want to, don't, want, don't want to worry you, but... Yeah, I've got first aid. I don't think that includes the amputation. No, I certainly hope not. <laughs> uh, um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll point out this... this sorry. I'll point out this, this bean that's sticking out of the, uh, the grass away from the barn. And so, should we, should we go there next? Uh, yeah, give me one minute. I just want to see if there's another way into the, the farmhouse. That's just have a quick look around there, see if there's anything. Yeah, so not too far away from the entrance to the cellar, there appears to be what you think could be a back door. Okay, I'll go over and check that. Um, if there's any windows that look behind it type thing, I'll look behind it first. There is a window nearby, yes. Yeah, I'll have a look through the window and see if there's anything behind it or uh, best guess probably looks out into a kitchen or that sort of kitchen diner area um you can see the remnants of maybe well there would be the remnants of a rusting stove in there um the roof itself has collapsed inwards you know kind of fallen in like that and there's bits of roof hanging down and bits of wood scattered all over the floor there may be cupboards and things it's a little gloomy inside Okay, I'll go to the door and see if I can open it, but I'll only open it a little bit and slowly. Um, the door's yeah, hanging it. off one in hinge, so ah, yes, right, you can okay. definitely open it. Okay, open it then. Okay. I'll take Should a look inside. Um, yeah, exactly as you think. It's a, it's a very rotten, sodden when it rains kind of uh, kitchen that's exposed to the elements. You look up and there are several collapsed holes in the roof does it look safe to walk into wooden or... floor but i mean you know that the cellar is under it and you didn't see any signs of the floor from the farmhouse so probably yeah it wasn't damp or anything so down there so okay i'll carefully walk in listening as I put my weight on the floor to see if it creaks or it sounds like it's going to give. And I have a, if it's safe, I'll have a look around the covers it, and things, see if there's any more of these vials. It seems very springy underfoot. Uh, you know, in, in places it kind of compresses, probably from the rottenness of the wood. But for the most part, it does seem to hold your weight. The cupboards, you know, you open a couple of cupboards, one of the doors comes off in your hand. You open another cupboard, the handle comes off and the door doesn't. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, they're in a pretty bad state. They've been exposed to the elements for a long time. Uh, a little bit of blacken around what you might, would have potentially have been an interior door, which is no longer there, and there's black around that and the first few cupboards nearby. Looking inside the cupboards, whatever was in there, you know, there might be a couple of tins of something in there, but 
There's yeah. nothing. Any there, there will be rotten biomass inside yeah. some of the cupboards. Yeah, okay. Um Bear in mind the fire brigade came, so they would have soaked the whole place yeah. as well. So it was yeah. just in case there were more of these vials <clears throat> hopefully with something no, in it. It doesn't seem to be. Not in here. And the rest of the house is burnt out anyway, so pretty bad state, yeah. This yeah. is the the only real room that appears to have four walls and partial roof attached to it. Okay, I'll head back out. Okay. And my luck, I'll go into the next place and fall straight through the floor because it'll be charcoal. <laughs> don't, don't put out the lantern because if I ask that bloody cat again. <laughs> oh, you want to carry the chain? If it comes near you, swing it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Make your uh, way over to the barn then. If it goes past this piece of wood, have a look at it as we go past. Okay. Well, yeah, so it's a beam. It, it's mostly, um, it looks like it's fallen away. Possibly a roof strut or a roof beam has kind of fallen away from the main barn structure. Has hit a rock, and so that's why it's at that slight angle. Kind of resting, one end is resting on a rock. Uh Ralph, your eye, you, something catches your eye. Okay. Take In fact, look. two things catch your eye. One, you can see what appears to be a flat stone, probably 30 to 40 feet away from the barn, just Partially buried in the soil. It catches your eye because there's something on it. Okay. Uh, what is it that's on it? For you to make it out, you'll need to spend a point of a cult. Okay. I feel like I don't want to do that, but I will. Okay. Bear with me. Don't we have binoculars? Yeah. Yeah, you have binoculars amongst you. Okay. The symbol is a bit odd. It's definitely a cult in nature. Definitely a Well, the symbol seems to be early sort of Welsh Celtic in nature. From your limited study of such things, it seems to be some kind of containment symbol. But glancing around about five paces, so if you're heading west to down, down the hill to another large flat area where the bar is pretty much smack in the middle, about... Um, so it's about 30 to 35 feet from the barn you find this stone. Glancing to the north, you can make out another stone, probably five, ten, no, probably ten paces away. You head over to that. And yeah. you're, you're taken a little bit aback because now you're looking at what you think could be an ancient Mesopotamian containment symbol. You have never, in all the literature that you have read, 
ever heard of both a sort of Celtic, Welsh, or, you know, Celtic Druidic containment symbol and a Mesopotamian symbol appearing in the same place. Yeah. You are talking probably two to three thousand years difference between the two. Obviously, Mesopotamia being much older than Welsh Druidic. Mm -hmm. You start to kind of, and you look, and it's at a slight curve from where the other one is. And quick calculation and, and angular, and you start it, to does it carry up? Does it carry on round? Not all the way. There are a number, but yes, essentially there are a number where you think the stones are missing. There is a number where the stones are so worn that you don't have a clue what they are or what symbols were on. And then in other places, you will find things like a Native American Indian symbol, a Middle Eastern symbol, an African, possibly um, uh, Ethiopian, Akan kind of symbol. But these are kind of dotted around and they all seem to be containment in nature of some kind. They all got the ones that are there anything that's similar between them only the theme right i think we'll need to take pictures of these individually okay um because i haven't got anything yeah. to take robins with of it so yeah okay because we'll, we'll probably need to look at those because i've got a couple of books i've got a book on um I can, go to, I can go to the library for it, to be honest, but I know there's a book that we brought about Kel uh, Celtic. Yes. Yeah. As you come back, you then notice that there is something etched on the barn. Just check it. Where, where's the centre of all these? Is it the barn, did you say? The barn appears to be the, the epicentre of this circle. Right, yes. so the, it's containing something within there. Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. Okay, so we if we go opposite directions taking photos, if we each take a photo of the wall yeah. the two cameras, we'll have essentially two copies in, in case they don't come out very well on one. Yeah. Yeah. Um the beam also now appears to your eye have something carved into it. Take a picture of that as well. Then. That's really hard to decipher there are bits of it missing burnt charred rotted away but the impression you get is that whatever is carved on the beams bears no relationship and in fact should never be together with the symbols on the stone they're just right. totally incompatible So it's like another symbol to nullify the containment ones. There's not enough of that symbol left for him, for Ralph to really work it out. I'll take photos anyway. I might be able to mm -hmm. get some perspective. Well, we take a, we take a photo. Right? Well, we might we might find it somewhere else as well where it's complete. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's strange that multiple the, this containment is drawing a proton, um, you know, different um, you know time times basically, um, and different cultures, different cultures. Um, and the only thing that the only the the only way I can think that that would be needed would be that it was to bind something that was throughout them all, and which was why I was looking for something that was similar between them all, like a, a, a one symbol. Um, 
but um, that could need translation. Um, but that would mean that it's something that is ancient and has stood the test of time. Of which I know very little <laughs> that would that would do that. Interesting. Are you saying that these cultists have maybe just gone completely into this thing rather than that they've done it fully hearted and um, and they've really given it like like it's real? Uh, or, yes. Well, see, I, I, the way I'm looking at this is were they trying to break the containment with something else? Because some of the stones are missing, others you can make out the symbols on. Some have been defaced or worn away. I would say that's probably happened in the last ten years. We're on a building, we're on a building site, and they could need needed stone for something. But they've not taken anything from the house. Well, the the house itself was yes. very badly. Uh, I wouldn't use that in construction. I wouldn't use any of the timbers, but the stone. Wasn't it mostly a timber building just built on um, on a rock surface? Don't know. Farmhouses I tend to think of as stone, but maybe that's just because of where I live. Yeah. yeah, the barn. It's the barn is uh, both this farmhouse and the barn were stone. Were, were mostly wood, right? Okay. Sat atop a stone foundation. Yeah, I mean they, they, would, they would have probably had a stone chimney as well, but yeah, because yeah. wood chimneys were a good idea, but didn't do very well. <laughs> I wonder why <laughs> they caused, but in the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. Um. I didn't check the barn, I guess. Well, the barn is bit barely a shell. Yeah. Anything There's... inside? No. Okay. No a floor underneath that where you can pick up like draft doors and things and saw things. Doesn't appear to be. How big are these stones that are surrounding the um, the building? Are they uh, like a... Oh, they're only small. And they, yeah, they wouldn't be... They, they vary from about that size to about that size. They're, they're Sorry, no I... uniform size, but they're, I... not, they're not deliberate. They seem to be just flat stones. Right, I was envisioning something like a wet stone, you know, a big round no. grinding stone. They were taking one of the stones? Well, if, if it's not complete all the way, well, how what, what yeah. will it do? I think it's, let's take let's take a couple of them at least. I'm just thinking whether it will help Rolf in determining what their purpose is if we actually have one. Hmm. Uh, this, this theme, we'll sorry. take the Celtic one because we've got the book on the Celtic. Yeah. Take the Mesopotamian one as well. Might as well as soon as it's, it's only small. Um, but we'll, but, we'll take whichever ones we can. Yeah. To be honest with you, um, but, the, to be honest, we've got pictures of them. So yeah, you know. yeah. I'm just thinking in case the pictures don't work or something happens to the cameras. Yeah. Um, this 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 beam that's fallen down. You say it was a beam from the side of the of the barn. Yeah. Yeah. On the other beams around the barn, is there any more carvings? And, and I mean, I won't understand what they are, but is there any, any doodlings and carvings on the sides? No. Just that one particular beam? Just the one. So this beam doesn't look to have been burnt at all. So it was separate from the barn at the time. 
it looks like it, no, it, it looks a bit of burning, but it looks like it fell away from the majority of the fire when it detached itself, right. protecting the majority of it. And the stone it's resting on is just a, a, a boulder. Yeah. I've definitely picked up one of these stones from the floor. Yeah. Because I okay. see that cat. <laughs> um, is, is there any point walking around? Well, we've walked around the barn already, but going a bit further afield. Um, you can, I mean, you can spend as much time as you want. You've probably been here now, yeah, a good hour investigating. You can spend some more time walking around if you wish. Yeah, I'll have a look around, see if, well, see if there's anything on the floor that's been overlooked when they came to collect evidence and things. There may be more of these vials that they overlooked. In a couple of places, you think you find slightly burnt and tattered very rotten pieces of cloth. Didn't Douglas say they watched from the forest or from the woods? Yeah. Um, are there any woods close by? Doesn't appear to be. Of course, it'd been levelled down by now for the building, wouldn't it? Yeah. But with photography and... Um, Oh no, you haven't got photography. You haven't got photographs of this particular scene. It's all back at the mansion. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. So no, you you can't you can't even get a sense for where those woods might have been. But you know, you spend another half hour wandering around, and other than the odd piece of cloth here and there, which is very rotten and faded, um. There is nothing else that, that kind of stands out at you. Yeah. A couple of times, you know, you kind of go near a boulder or a rock and you hear a hiss and you kind of step away gingerly. You know, snake bites, not something you fancy having. No. Especially feral snakes. So you return back to your car um, just as it kind of reaches noon. Um, instruct your driver to what take you to Pasadena uh, we'll get some lunch first I think okay and then go on to Pasadena there is place for lunch okay so Not with it. that we'll while you do that we'll take a 10 minute or so break that's just uh, 10 minutes all right or do you want 15 yeah 10, 10 minutes fine. Done, yeah. done clock right. back for 9 o'clock then
Sorry, back. I had a bit of a bird catastrophe. Oh no. I've introduced a budgie outside in the aviary. So we left the her uh, cage in there. And then one of the finches decided we're going to go in the, in the cage and couldn't get back out again. Ah. So I shot it. <laughs> <laughs> Fed it to the cat. That's right. How many birds do you have? Oh, about 23 plus the budgie. And they just sit there chittering away every day. Yes, at four o'clock in the bloody morning. <laughs> Joining the dawn chorus. That's right. Uh, you do so much time just sat there watching them. Yeah, but it's unusual now, I think, isn't it, to keep finches and things? It doesn't yeah. seem as popular as it used to be, sort of twenty years ago. No, exactly. I mean, these are the father-in-law's ones. But when he passed away, we adopted them, and um, we started with eight, and they breed like rabbits. So we're not letting them breed this year. Any eggs pop out, they get they get, go in the bin or a small little omelet. What type of finches are they? Uh, zebra finches and Bengalese ones. Oh, right, okay. So, whites, reds and blacks, and browns, cowy brown type colours. Very nice. I'd like a goldfinch, but they're illegal to keep. <clears throat> yeah, I could well imagine. Yeah. Protected bird, I guess, as well, isn't it? Mm. The natives of this country, aren't they? Goldfinches. Yeah. They are beautiful, though. Yeah, we used to have quite a few around here at one point. I've not seen any for a long time. And that's the problem. Yeah, well, yeah. after lockdown, there was a big boom. You saw them everywhere, but um, again, they seem to be going again. Yeah, we. There's a couple. I keep seeing a couple on the street just down the road from where I live. I just try to encourage them into my garden, but my garden's not really bird friendly at the moment there's not enough shrubs and trees for them to sit in and you've got cats <laughs> yeah the cats are a problem but they're not too uh, i'm saying that we've had two juvenile birds in the house this year already oh both alive both managed to get them out and escape but yeah well that's the thing they don't bring them in for food it's like look what i brought you yeah, yeah. well charlie our westy did the same thing when he was a puppy he brought in a finch to play with Ran behind the settee so we couldn't find him and eventually we got it out and it it wasn't a hand at all he just basically grabbed a friend and brought him home yeah. from the garden but he liked all the little birds uh, in the garden and chases the big ones away <laughs> and obviously the garden is safe from cats so we get loads of birds in our garden nice. quite a big garden as well bunch of over sovereign to get back yeah, we had a hawk on top of the aviary at one point, and it's like, get away. Well, we have Buzzard Circle over, and we've had red kites nearby. But yeah. the, we've got that many crows that they kind of attack the buzzards when it's flying over. Yeah, yeah. I, I would love to be able to uh, attack the crows to get off the buzzard, leave him alone, type of thing. Yeah, I see that a lot around here as well, because we're, we're rural. Yeah. Yeah, is this, is this working now? Yeah, it's working. Yeah, I have no idea what happened then. It was just uh, I, I could see you guys talking, and all I've done is walk away and walk back again. It's gone. So the that, journey a out, yeah, the, the journey out to Pasadena is uneventful, if a little long and a little tedious. It's about half past two in the afternoon by the time you get sort of into Pasadena itself. Oh, actually, it's a 30-minute drive northeast of downtown with heavy traffic. Okay, it's not as bad as we thought it was. So, I don't what know. Oh, it's Pasadena. Yeah, according to this. Probably Probably not. It's a suburb, Probably. isn't it? Probably wasn't from where I was. From Beverly, Hill, from Beverly Hills Hotel. 
it was 45 minutes. Downtown, downtown's further down, isn't it? Anyway, early afternoon, the time you've had lunch is about half past, and you, you, know, you saunter over there, it's about half past two. Following the directions that you've managed to glean of where the estate is, um, you, th- you find what you think is the estate. It, it's uh, it's cer- certainly, um, sort of, estate is the right word. It's a big mansion gated carriage house in front surrounded by other similar large mansions and large houses this is not so much a private gated community as almost each house is its own community both in the size and scope Uh, for you know this time period these houses are going to be expensive is there um, a name plate on the mailbox? Um, there'd be no reason not to have a name plate on the, the mailbox. It would say Trammel. Wonderful. Um, Get the driver to put to the gate and um, let's see where this goes. Okay. You're going to drive up to the gate or just stop where you are and walk over to the gate? Joseph, this is more your type of uh, situation. Yeah, well, we're we're visiting, so... Yeah, we're visiting, so we'll drive up to the gate. I don't fancy walk up that long driveway. Um, Okay, so the gate is roadside, and then it's a fairly long driveway up to the house. Between the house and the gate sits the carriage house. Um, I'll get the... um, I'll get Larry to tootle his horn. Again, there is a bell at the gate. Oh, in which case, yes, I'll get Larry to get out and ring the bell. Okay. Gets out, rings the bell. Couple of minutes. You see a gentleman walking down, striding down with purpose in what could only be described as a gorilla in a two piece suit. <laughs> He is a big, burly, very hardly, con- you know, hardly concealing his muscles in a very well-tailored, um, lightweight sort of blue pinstripe suit. And obviously the, the, the classic fedora. <clears throat> and he comes over to the gate and uh, opens the sort of the person gate and comes up to the car, taps on the window. You're muted. Still muted. Still muted. I'm talking without pushing my button. Um, hello, my good man. Is Sam Tramwell uh, in residence today? Mr. Tramwell, and he speaks in a clear Mexican voice. Now, Mr. Tramwell is not available for guests. Are you expected, sir? Uh, no, no, no. We're we're a friend of a friend, and we're just hoping to uh, to catch him to have a, a, a couple of words with him. As I say, he is unavailable today, sir. Perhaps uh, an appointment, if I may so, may recommend one as such. Hmm, uh, certainly. certainly. Um, do you have Mr. Trumbull? Well, you'll have Mr. Trumbull's number. You can um, so we can make an appointment. He just looks at you and kind of frowns for a second. Uh, if you are a friend of a friend, your friend can give you Mr. Trammell's number, surely. No. Were there any phone numbers in the address book? No. Okay. Uh, sadly, my friend is no longer with us. Hmm. That is a sad occurrence. Um, 
Unfortunately, I do not have Mr. Trammell's number. I am just the help. Oh, and I don't suppose you uh, you would have a, an appointment book by any chance on you? Uh, he, he makes a show of patting his breast pocket. <laughs> um, as he does so, you can see as he squashes it down a little. Well, actually, the jacket's quite tight. You can clearly see him patting the bulge of a pistol. And he's just patting it. I'm afraid I don't have his address book, sir. Well, uh, sorry, um, his um, diary. Well, in which case, I'm, I'm very sorry to have disturbed you. We'll, uh, we'll find a way to get an appointment with him. That's wonderful, my good man. Very good. If you reverse and drive, you should be safe. Good day. Good day. And you watch as he goes back and he pulls the gate too. Doesn't appear to lock it and you just watch as you kind of drive. He kind of takes about five or six steps inside the house, turns and just stands impassively with his hands by his side and watching you. Just drive away nonchalantly. That was a very big man. That was barely male threat. Hmm. So we know Mr. Tramwell is living there. Tramwell. Yeah. Tramwell. Sorry, Tramwell, sorry. And he doesn't like visitors. He doesn't like visitors who are not expected. Hmm. Very reclusive person, then. Hmm. Especially since he's cut himself off from, from his work from the university, so he must have funds coming from somewhere. Um, See the book hold uh, in the book? Yeah, I Rather think so. Than... Ralph, or... or, or... Or Alfred, do, do you think the um, the tax office in LA would have details of Tramwell's in them, his earnings and whatnot? If it's above board, yeah. If it's through this these ledgers, then maybe not. I very much doubt they'll release them, though. Unless yeah. it's a unless it's a public figure. Hmm. And it's required by law. I wonder if the phone book will have his number in, but uh, we can always check. Got his address. We could always send him a telegram. Uh, where to, sir? Um, do we have time to go to, to Bookwell? <coughs> but, sorry. Uh, sir, um, I think I can make it to... Book Vault, uh, sorry. Where is Book Vault? Uh, downtown Los Angeles, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think I can make it into downtown Los Angeles in in about an hour. It should give you an hour or so before people start to think about leaving for the day. Hmm. Let, let, let's do that. Yeah. Very well, sir. It drives you about an hour. So it, it gets close to four o'clock by the time you pull up outside the offices. Um, of Mr. Bookwald. You head inside. Um, it, it's a single, sort of single story building. It appears to have um, a fairly wide frontage. It looks to be split into two parts. One is Bookwald's accountancy company, and the other appears to be just some other kind of random. Um, sort of tax kind of office. Um, is there a receptionist or? There is indeed a receptionist. I'll, I'll step over with my best smile and say, hello, my dear, is, um, is book rolled in at all? Uh, yes, he's in. Um, do you have an appointment? No, I, I was hoping you could squeeze us in. 
Well, he is um, a rather busy, uh, rather busy. Um, may I ask who's calling and what it's in relationship relation to? Mm, certainly, it's uh, Joseph, Joseph Westmore. Uh, Mr. Westmore. Regarding? If in regards to um, some accounting work you did for a friend of mine. Hmm. Um, well, perhaps I can save you the trouble. Mr. Buckfold does not discuss... Oh, no, 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 no. I, I was hoping to maybe, if you could do the same thing for me. Hmm. Uh, and, and your friend is... No? Oh, do I, do I, do I. Um, my, my friend is, uh, or, or, or was, um, Are you looking for Ramon? Yeah, Ramon Echeverria. You're going to... Oh, do I? That's why I was wondering which name you were going to give. Yeah. Um, in fact, change that. My, my friend's name... Oh, would I? Would I go all balls? <laughs> Now let's get George Avery. No, uh, uh, as. As, sorry. Ah, very well. Uh, please, please, take a seat. I'll be with you in a few moments. And she disappears and, uh, God, the picture they've got for him looks like Putin. Um, comes back after five minutes. Uh, he says, she says, oh, I'm terribly sorry, uh, Mr. Westmore. Um, Mr. Buckwald, um, is a little surprised and wonders if you've got the right accountant. He is not familiar with any of his um, um, clients by the name of Ayres. <clears throat> oh, perhaps you could mention Mr. Echeverian. Go big or go home. Okay. Look out for any side doors opening and him running. <laughs> yeah. My thought is we're going to be asking about him anyway. Yeah. It's just whether or not he'll see us before. So we can mm. ask him the question or whether he'll run for it. She comes after a few moments. Um, Mr. Buckfold says he's busy, but he can spare 20 minutes of his time. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, my dear. Yeah, please follow me. And she kind of takes you to a little corridor and to a door at the end. Um, she knocks and says, uh, come in. Um, let her open the door and we'll go in. Uh, Josephine, please bring uh, refreshments for our guests. Um, I normally take tea at this time of day. Are you okay? Or would you rather have coffee? No, tea would be wonderful, thank you. I'm okay, thank you. Please, be seated. Um, there's a small table, um, as it would be, with probably four chairs around it. He's currently sat behind his rather large desk, quite a big, grandiose oak desk, fairly large wingback chair. Um, you've got... Um, this gentleman, kind of, uh, let's have a look. Got this gentleman sort of sat opposite you. Not a um, gangster. Not a gangster. I was going to say, with that hair, <coughs> that, that uh, nose, that more. nose. Yeah, nose. It looks like he's broke. He's an enforcer. He looks like he's been broken a couple of times, doesn't it? I'm going to oh, check the, the floor for plastic sheeting. Yeah. And the um, ring on his hand that will hurt. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's one of the craze, isn't it? <laughs> it is, actually. After a few moments, Josephine comes back in with a, a silver tray and she places it down, some water um, in a sort of a small crystal vase, um, uh, small teapot, silver. 
and she pours out the tea, leaves the milk and sugar on the side for you to help yourself. She disappears, and Book of All kind of looks you up and down. Ralph, I'll take a glass of water um, and start taking notes. Mr. Echeverria, you're friends of his? Um, we're, we're, we've heard of him. But you're not friends. Mm. We we haven't had the pleasure to meet him. I should think not. Um, I don't recognise you from back then, so I presume... Well, what can I tell you? Well, where to start, really? You're not from the IRS, are you? No, no. We're um, we're, we're helping somebody out who disappeared in those sad times. Hmm. They were definitely sad times. So, what can you tell us about the night in 1924? The night in 1924. He kind of looks at you. Puzzled for a moment. I suppose I can tell you that I worked for Mr. Echevarria from 1918 when I first opened my business until he died in 1924. He was a wealthy man. Keeping his accounts was the lion's share of my business. It wasn't particularly good for my business when he passed away, but eventually I managed to find other clients, other jobs. And, you know, I am a family man. And support my wife and child uh, and children so I'm um, yes but was, was this guy in any of the pictures I can't remember whether you said Buckfell was in them he doesn't appear to be right. looking at him trying to picture him sort of 10 years younger doesn't jump out at you in terms of what you saw in those pictures Um, so that's all you did from just purely accounting? Yes, that's all he called on me to do. That Was that both sets of accounts? Both sets of accounts? I'm assuming he had, I, I believe he had uh, dealings with Black Town Cars. Those accounts? Yes. Where did you get them? No, no, never mind. Don't tell me. I always wondered what happened to those. They went missing from my office after I'd learned about the police investigation. Um, but slightly before Mr. Echevarria's death. Luckily, I had duplicates, of course. I was terrified that the police had gotten hold of them and would use them to put us all on trial and that Mr. Echevarria would find out. So, yes... You have those. Yes. Well. Black is obviously Mr. Echeverria. And it seems that you've worked out that I was town car. That's correct. Indeed. It's also a, a phrase slick in there. Yes, I never delved into exactly who the recipients were. I merely chalked up the I merely um, kept track of the sales of nectar. Um, what exactly was Nectar? A drug that he manufactured, I guess, somehow. Maybe with the help of the Mexicans or Colombians. I didn't really want to know. By then I was, shall we say, in a little deep. And as, as I mentioned, the threat of the police discovering that I was involved was too much, would have been too much for my wife and children to bear. 
So I merely did what I did. Um, he was an in interesting man, Mr. Um, Mr. Echevarria. Um, the leader of, uh, I guess you could call it a church, maybe? Um, they worshipped something, a, an old god that I believe he called Golgoroth. It was all very druidic. Um, Mr. Echevarria had this man from the university, um, um, uh, Professor, Professor of Ancient History, was very knowledgeable about these religious ceremonies. Um, um, what was his name? Yes. Uh, George Ayres, that's right, thank you, yes. Um, yes, uh, I, he seemed to be the expert um, that Raymond would quite often discuss worship with. I have to say, and I'll be honest with you, gentlemen, um, Mr. Echevarria hosted orgies, and that's the plain truth, and I believe that's what killed him. An orgy on that fateful night, as you so carefully put it, Mr. Westmore, um, that led to his demise. Anyway, that was how they worshipped. Apparently, Golgoroth demanded orgies. I must say, um, I tried to keep as uninvolved as possible. I was evolved enough to make sure I kept getting the business, of course. And, and, and for a moment, he kind of drops his kind of worried demeanor as if he's kind of thinking back. And you see a slight flicker of a smile across his face. I dipped my wick a few times at his parties. Uh, certainly, um, Managed to enjoy a few celebrities and upcoming celebrities, he says, with a, a slightly cheekier smile. But I never took nectar. When I... You know what it did? What the effects were? Oh, yes. It made people become unhinged. Um, it seemed to give people the ability to lose their inhibitions completely, to enhance their sexual prowess, perhaps. Some people could go for hours, hours. Nectar, not Viagra. Nectar. <laughs> Nectar was interesting. Um, to be fair, it's how Mr. Echevarria made most of his money. Um, it was worth more by weight than gold. He sold it to the people in the cult and to a few really jaded outsiders, but in fairness, the majority of people who bought it, uh, who are listed in there, were cult members. You mentioned Slick. I seem to recall that might have been a Mr. Spend. Yeah. Uh, does the name Trammel mean anything to you? Trammel, Trammel, Trammel. The big house in Pasadena. He, he was an odd one. I vaguely remember the man. I think he was a trusted member of Echevarria's inner circle, but I couldn't be sure. He creeped me out. But then, to be fair, a lot of the more passionate ones of the church creeped me out with their attitude both the the men and the women was he wealthy back then because he's ridiculously wealthy now well i i couldn't really i couldn't really say i was hoping to get his business um 
but he made it very clear after Echevarria's death that he wasn't interested, so I've really avoided him and haven't seen Trammell or given him a thought for a decade. So what happened to all Echevarria's assets, his money? Just furniture. Did it go to someone in particular or, or to the church or...? No, no, no. We, um... I was named as his executor of the will and had to deal with his um, estate, so I sold it. Do you have details of who bought what, at what, and where they were auctioned and things? I don't particularly have those details. Um, however, bear with me one second. Now I've got to look for all the info. Um, Uh, I do, he, um, he tells you that, oh, for goodness sake, too many bits of paper to look at. Um, I thought it existed here. See, now I'm breaking continuity. This is doing my head in. That, um, 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 um right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't, don't, don't worry, because I've just had a game invite from Dart to play Teenage Mutant Turtles. Yeah, so I've had that as well. <laughs> um, <clears throat> right, so yes, he will give you the name of Magnificent Villa Auction Services. Oh, we've, we've had that already, yes. No, in fact, that's the name of the company that shares the office block with Buckfold. Okay. Not another, not another tax company. It's that. So, what happened to all these assets? Is money from selling all these things? Did it go to a specific person? He shakes his head. Um, I, no. Um, he went to his sister. It was just held in state. He has no known, um, no known relatives. So it's still sitting there unclaimed. Indeed. Did you? Yeah. Did you? Were you about to say sister? Yeah, but he didn't. Yeah, I was, but he wasn't. He didn't have a relative. She, Chavari didn't have any relatives. Right. I'm sure um I'm sure um they would be more than happy to um dig out the um paperwork. Um hmm. do, do you Mr. know Mr Stewart? Would you uh, possibly write us, as, as, as you were dealing with the estate, um, a letter of introduction to them so that they will uh, share those details? Um, he looks at his uh, pocket watch for a second. And he says, well, they'll still be open, and I believe Mr. Stewart is in today. Maybe we could go and see them together. That would be Maybe. most accommodating. Yeah, if you have time. Oh. For you gentlemen, I have plenty of time. I just hope that you're not going to drag all this up and bring it to the press. Nothing good could come of you doing that. Just let sleeping dogs lie. Um, and, yeah, I'll stand up and, uh, well, well, hopefully we'll stand up and go and follow his lead. Okay. Does any of you have any assess honesty points remaining? No, I don't. I don't even have it. Nope. By the way, you'll have had two XP for last week. Is this session five? 
That's six. Six. So you should have had 12 XP in total. Ooh. Okay. So I've spent eight so far. Spent two. Um, so I've got 10 out of 12. I left. spent them all. <laughs> spent eight. So that means I've got two more. Of course, I can't raise really assess honesty now that we need it because I know we need it. Um... You already have assess honesty, right? Yeah. So you can raise it because you've been using it. I would yeah. agree with you that you can't just suddenly acquire a skill. Well, no, the book actually says you can in the sense that if you can justify, it, oh, this is a long lost skill that, you know, something that I've not really practiced, but it's just come back to me, like photography or architecture or geology, that kind of thing. So, yeah, there's no reason you've got the points. There's no reason to spend a point just because you need a one point, as says honestly, spend. Yeah. Um... Okay, that's an interesting bug. I just raised it to three, and it's given me all three points back. Okay. So I know that I've spent two of them, so uh, I'll just spend them again now just to no get the character right. If you click on the name on your character sheet, it brings up the, the, the pools, and you can just click the plus on, plus on both lines. I've just been clicking on her this. Um, as he goes to stand up then, so you kind of look at him and you just go, are you sure that's everything, Mr. Buckfold? And he he sits back down with a bit of a heavy sigh and he sort of says, you know, it's been a long time since I've thought about Mr. Echevarria, Mr. Trammell, the events of that night. When I found out what had happened, I quickly burnt my robes, went about my business, pretended I'd never knew the man, beyond being his accountant. But I remember one thing. One day, probably a month or maybe a month and a half before that terrible night in August, we were sat together in his study going over some accounts normally our conversation is fairly business and uh, like occasionally he talks to me a little bit about the work the church but, he, he, but this time it was a bit different he looked at me he said abraham would you like to know something truly perverse and he, he was saying this almost with a smile on his face a smile of satisfaction those who follow me in the way of Golgoroth are deceived. My work goes deeper than any of them know. Prepare yourself, Abraham. Prefer, prepare yourself for that end. I don't have the faintest... Well, I didn't have the faintest idea then, and I don't have the faintest idea today what he might have meant. Prepare for what? But I'll say again what I said earlier. If you're prying into that, into that event, into that deeper thing, don't. There'll be no profit to it. Go home to your families. Hold the ones you love close. Don't dredge up the very past. He sits for a second and he says, Come, let's go see if Mrs. Stewart's available. Have a quick little round is the like the, the doorways and round the walls. Isn't it? There's no marks on it, sir. He, no. So is that all he said? Golgoth work uh, followers are deceived. It, it goes much deeper than that, and that's yes. all he said. He didn't go into any details. No. Right. Mentioned about him being the liar or something, and that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's what we had, didn't it? So yeah. it was all deception. 
Hmm. Well, they thought they were all there for weren't they? <clears throat> yeah. But they were saying that's... Well, as as was um, disillusioned, wasn't it? That, yeah. Um, Echeverian was uh, deceiving people, and then he was taken to one side and... Hmm. Um, it was was in a circle yeah. because he'd actually realised that he was being deceived. Yeah. Did, one of you did ask him, didn't you, about the events of that night? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So this is what he will have recounted. He, he, he'll say, one day Mr. Echevaria called me up to the house, and when I showed he, when I showed he was raving, he said that there was a police investigation trying to bring him down. He told me if the police came around asking questions that I wasn't supposed to talk about. Pardon my French, but no shit. There was a big ceremony a few weeks after that. I begged out of it. I don't mind admitting that I was frightened by the police investigation. Thank goodness I stayed away, because that was the night the whole thing blew up. I had the sense that there was a connection between the investigation and the end of it all, but I don't know what happened, and I don't want to know what happened. I'm just glad none of it blew up on me. I have a family now, children, you understand. And that's when he'll have told you to not drag any of this out into the open. Right. Yeah. Do you know whether any of the parties involved back then are still active? Because I have been threatened. I'm just wondering who would be the person threatening, telling us to drop this, as he, if this is still going. He um he shakes his head. He said, "Well, Ayers wasn't there that night." Apparently, he'd gone on some kind of archaeological expedition to Africa, I believe. Before the night in question. Before the night in question. Okay. Trammell, as far as I know, was still a while. Well, he was he was present. So, uh, at the um, at the the funeral of of Mr. Echevarria, that was kind of the last time I saw him. I'd, I'd hoped he would have a conversation and. I'd be able to take on his books, but he clearly wasn't interested in speaking with me and never did. Um, beyond that, I don't know of anybody else who survived. Oh, yes, I do. The lovely Miss Clarendon. I believe I saw her in the accompaniment of Mr. Spend once or twice. Was she there on the night in question? Then? No. No. Well, he doesn't know, but the fact that she's still alive suggests to him she wasn't. Yeah, she said that she I think wasn't. she said she said yeah. she did, didn't go because she did this odd distance herself from it. Yes, and yeah. she kind of knew what Spend wanted. Yeah, I was wondering whether this was contradicting what she told us. I gotcha. Yeah. I mean, the other thing, you know, from your assess honesty, Echevarria probably played along in the least amount that he could get away with to maintain his business relationship and therefore the income that he was getting from Echevaria. Yeah. So his participation in the church and his dipping his wick occasionally was very much a... Uh, show his them, face. Show his face. Happy. Keep the client happy. Absolutely. Yeah. It's interesting that there's a lot of money out there that's... Just, just sat there, yeah. But there's people obviously still involved in some way that's threatening us. Well, if if this Tootle has, as a Trammell, sorry, has, has found a way to do these drugs, maybe that's what he's doing now. Mm. Um, he takes you next door um, and introduces you to Mr. Stewart, Mr. Howard Stewart. Um, Mr. Stewart kind of listens very quickly to Buckwald's questions. You know, mostly, does he have any paperwork or anything relating to a 1924 September time frame transaction of um, the estate of a Mr. Echevarria? Uh, Mr. Stewart disappears off and after a few moments comes back with um, a sheaf of papers. And he says, of course, uh, Mr. Buckfold, I, I definitely do. Um, 
and all of you kind of sit around in a conference room and he, he kind of runs you through it. Um, the records are impeccable. From an assess honesty perspective, the people that you meet while you're there was um, very much... Uh, so the, the people that you meet there, the, the workers are very honest to the core. After a little bit of wrangling, does anybody have bureaucracy? I do, but I don't have any points in the moment. You don't need to spend any points. You just need to use a bureaucratic tract with Mr. Stewart. Because, all, because at first, all he was prepared to say is, I can confirm that we handled Mr. Echevarria's estate and that um, his um, real estate especially his house in Highland Park, was purchased by a lawyer. And the property out in the, um, the farm was never sold. But that's as far as he's prepared to go. Um, with a little bit of bureaucracy and sort of talking him around, eventually... Because um, mm, we, we were led to believe that um, the, the, the um, ba, 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 Buchanan Construction bought the barn and the farm. He kind of looks through the list and, and very reluctantly. Um, and, and you almost lay out some kind of veiled, veiled, thinly veiled threats, you know. Um, and he, he sort of, well, gentlemen, I can confirm that most of the furniture, and it reels off a bunch of names, right? Nothing, nothing triggers. The names that you have not heard doesn't appear, you know, uh, Clarendon didn't buy anything. Um, Job didn't. Job didn't buy anything. Henslow didn't buy anything. Walters didn't buy anything. The only thing that catches you is he gets to. Um, I can confirm that um, a number of books were purchased by UCLA, and separately, the remainder of Mr. Echevarria's library was sold as a single lot to a Samson Trammell of Pasadena. <laughs> thought that was coming. And I'm guessing Mr. Trammell didn't buy any of the furniture. Uh, no, he didn't. Was the uh, was the, the dodgy chair listed? Yeah. Um, yes, we have a listing of sofa and chairs. Maybe it was an hallucination, perhaps. Quite possibly. Um, purchased by Mr. Charles Heitman of Beverly Hills. For the princely sum of $35, I, if my records are correct. I have to say, if my memory serves me right, and, and looking at the description here, the, the sofa and chairs were of a very fine Italian make. Hmm. Um, you say that the, the land where the barn and the farm are has not been sold? Uh, or just did not, not sell at the auction, oh, sorry? Did not sell at the auction. Um, yes, we, we managed to sell it to... Um, Construction company. Yeah, wonderful. Sorry. A couple of years later. But if that's all, gentlemen, um, it is 
time getting i've got a few more things to attend to before we close up for the evening um yes thank thank you uh mr stewart that's been been very helpful do you, were there any uh, contact details for travel on that uh transaction um yes um he rose off the same address that you visited earlier in the day. Yeah. Okay. No telephone number. Unfortunately, not so. Okay. Um, unless there's anything else, I think we should. Can't think of anything else. No, nope. might as well head back. And uh, I want to give Bookwald a firm handshake and um, just thank him for for being very helpful. Okay. Uh, quick question for Bookwald. Um, As you're kind of walking back out now, yeah. 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 The Echevari is money. Would anyone else be able to claim it? Like, uh, could Samson Trammell have access to the accounts, for example? as being part of the inner circle of the church? Um, no. The money will remain in uh, in, a, in an account, in trust, until such a time as somebody can prove they are the rightful heir and successor to Mr. Echevarria. And then if that defaults to the state, is that right? Indeed, sir. Yes. Um, I think it would be another... 20 or so years when before that happens but indeed probably beyond my time at least okay thank you welcome it changed my name to trevaria <laughs> you're rich enough as it says this is true we don't so. know how much this is how much money they've got well actually we probably do from the dodgy ledgers got an idea at least oh yeah he was he was bringing in a decent amount of money probably a couple of thousand dollars a month whoa uh so samson travel travel is in deeper than we thought he's got the rest of the library mm, it, it sounds like a proper um Follower. Yeah. Um, um, I, I've been regularly checking my arm, by the way. Um, and when, okay. I get, when we get back to the hotel, I won't mind just seeing if there's a physician there. Yeah. Um, your arm is itchy and a little bit angry, but by the time you get back to the hotel, it's all but gone. There are just a few kind of indentations where the cat tried to bite you. Um, and on, on further looking, it doesn't really look like it penetrated too much skin. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, that's, what, so, that's, that's what it wants you to see. Yeah. What, we, what, we, what we can see is a festering wound. <laughs> you, you just can't see anything. With, with a mouth, I, I, like a stack, stack, stack. So a couple of thousand dollars in nine, yeah, a couple of thousand dollars in nineteen thirty-four would be equivalent of earning forty-three to forty-four thousand dollars now a month, a lot of money. Yeah. Can't see any cultists or anything that were a member of it leaving that alone. Well, if it's in a trust fund, not even the accountant will be able to touch it. Correct. Yeah, and I, I'm thinking more of the product. Is that oh, yeah. About? Yeah, well, I, I reckon um, Samson's all over that. Yeah, I do. Well, with his, uh, with the his, library with it, might have recipes or whatever. Yeah. With, his, with his Mexican uh, bodyguard, do you mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where potentially the drug's coming from. But I will say, if he throws that hat, I'm out of there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that um, when Joseph goes to sleep, we chain the door just in case something happens with that bike. <laughs> yeah. 
guess he goes a little bit loopy and comes after us with something. I don't think they cut people's bed now, is it? <laughs> All right. It's nearly six o'clock. It's about 20 to six by the time you arrive back at the hotel for the evening. Once again, you order food to the cottage. Uh, sorry, do, can we just check at reception and see if anybody's called and left a ah, message? Yes. Um, it simply says, um, Mr. Westmore, stop. No trammel listed at university faculty in 1924. Stop. Wonderful thing. Oh, I don't need to say thank you. It's a blue piece of paper. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, were say, you were saying thank you to the uh, receptionist, receptionist just, weren't you? Yes, thank you very much. So it seems like Trammell was not part of the faculty. So he wasn't a professor of maths there? No. Okay, yep, yep, food. Well, well, we... Okay. Yeah, I will start pouring through um, these books, one of which was Celtic, wasn't it? Um, I just just start doing, doing some light research into these uh, symbols. Okay. Um, and then tomorrow for me, I think it's going to be to the library. All right. Give me a second. Let's have okay. a look. Yeah, I can probably help you look. I'll look at the pictures rather than see if I can spot things that well, are similar. Yeah, to if you, the you, thing. Can, you can find somewhere to get those photos developed and get copies made. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably a good idea to you know, get those put somewhere secure as well. And maybe if we if we open our own safe deposit box. Yeah. With us all as signatures not at the same on it. Bank, mm. Yeah, not at the same bank. At one, at one that's open. <laughs> yeah, one that's so likely one, to one that's functioning. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. The book that you kind of pour over it was the book that you picked up from Henslow's own um, office. Uh, yeah, I know it was only sort of like light high level stuff um but i don't know whether i'll have any reference to protection or anything like that if not like I say the library is a good place because there's plenty of things we need to look into yeah. it's like we not even, I've, not, I've not even looked at golgoroth yet any de any detail looked at anything like that so you also got a celtic book from janet didn't you at the beginning you, you did. from yeah the collection there as well yeah yeah so looking through them <laughs> The two books are interesting in that in places there are odds with one another and they don't seem to agree on specific interpretations of things. You, therefore, you don't particularly get anything useful from either of them. Certainly not in relation to Celtic. Um, oh, we paused. What have I done? Um, certainly not in relation to specific symbols um, or symbolisms for various sort of incantations or spells. Okay. Both of them are sort of um, the one that you got from Janet was probably about 150 pages. The one you got from the um, the office of Henslow is about 100, just over 100 pages. It takes you about two and a half hours to just skim through the pair of them to get that general feeling. I mean, you could, if you wanted to, pour over them, but that will take you a couple of days each book. I, I don't. I honestly don't think at, at the, those there'll be anything in there. I think it, this will be something that specifically will will need um, mm. a deep dive in a in an actual you know proper section in the library. Okay. All right. Whether that be the city one or the university, the university one might be better. Yep. I think then, is there, as long as if there's nothing specific you want to do that night, are you staying together? Are you separating, going off and doing other things separately? Anything like that, or 
or what are your plans? Is there anywhere here I could develop the film? If I can get a hold of things, or will I need to go to? You would need to go to sort of a pharmacy or somewhere like that where there is a, a, a dark room. Tomorrow. Yeah, do that tomorrow then. Okay, in which case, I think as November 10th, 1934 draws to a close, with you having learned more information, especially about the third member of the inner circle, as it were, who appears to be alive and prospering in Pasadena, we will call it a night. Excellent. Mm, yeah. We survived with our sanity intact for another week. Indeed. Mm. Well, let's see if we get um, killed through the night. Indeed. You can see what happens. See you in the morning. Yeah. Wearing a lovely little necktie. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, indeed. It's going to almost feel like you're being picked on. <laughs> Bloody cats. Um, well, I'm taking uh, this and Thursday. Yes. And just to remind our viewers, Thursday night at 7.15 is our D&D &D adventure where seven of us battle through a dungeon of doom. And squiggly faces... It has definitely become a bit of a dungeon crawl at the moment. Um, yeah, I think we're both on the all on the cusp of going wibble as well in that one. Yeah. <laughs> wibble. Yeah. Unfortunately, this week, I don't think we've got Catherine joining us for D&D, &D, sadly. Not as far as I know. I'll be spectating. Cool. So, yeah, we'll see you all Thursday. And again, thank you very much for tonight. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you kindly. Good right. evening. Cheers, folks. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.